you, me, Canon M50 review talking about vlogging. Let's do that. Ba-boom. <laughs> All right, if you're new to this channel, one, welcome. Thank you for being here, but also let me know so I can write that YouTube algorithm a nice thank you card because, well, you know. But for the rest of you guys, know that I've been saying that the Canon SL2 is the absolute best budget vlogging rate because for about $1,000 US, you can get the SL2, an ultra wide angle lens, a 50 millimeter prime, a microphone, a gorilla, gorilla, gorilla pod, and a memory card, and that is wild insane value and that camera just works. So much so that when Don's photo let me borrow one for review, I was like, I have to keep this camera. But then those jerks said, do you wanna try out the M50? And I was like, oh, yeah, of course I do. So give me the 11 to 22 millimeter, this 22 millimeter prime lens, and let's giddy up. And so I tried it on and was like, ooh. I think I'm gonna keep this. But there are some specific reasons for why you would want to keep it over the SL2. I still massively believe in the SL2 and obviously it's a good chunk cheaper. But let's talk about the SL2, some basic specs. Shoots 1080p video up to 60 frames per second. It shoots 120 frames per second at 720p but you are going to lose your image stabilization, your autofocus and your audio which is kind of lame, so that's up to you. Shoots 4K, but it is gonna be a bigger crop factor, and you're gonna lose the dual pixel autofocus for that great focusing. So you have to know how and why you're using 4K. I say it's easier to say it doesn't have 4K, it doesn't shoot 120 frames per second, and just own what it is. At 1080p, up to 60 frames per second, you can still do slow motion. Looks mm, great. It has the flip out, very angle touch screen thingy so that you're able to see yourself, frame up yourself in the vlogging and make sure that if something is really bright behind you, your face doesn't get too dark and that's important. It's got the microphone input jack so you can put a microphone on it so if it's super, super windy like this. It's nighttime, it's nighttime, Kingslayers. That was without a microphone jack. For reference, when you put this on there, as soon as I did, you couldn't hear the wind at all. So that is massively helpful. It's got the kind of the stabilization. It's an electronic stabilization. It crops in a little bit more, but smooths it out. It's actually really handy when you're shooting with a lens that doesn't have stabilization. For vlogging or other things where you've got a really wide lens and that has it the built-in stabilization, I don't think you need it, but a handy, handy feature. One of the best parts about it having 4K, honestly, is that it does in-body time lapses in 4K. So you just dial up all your settings, you set it to what you want, and it's shooting 4K time lapses. And that's really handy because then you can do a slow push in or a slow pull back, or you can come across the screen or punch in and saves you a whole bunch of time because you're not having to shoot multiple time lapses in the same way and you get a whole bunch of different shots. The main question is, do I like this camera? And obviously I've decided to keep it, so it would be fairly obvious that I like this camera, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I really like this camera. And it basically boils down to this. It just works and looks really good without me having to think about anything. And that's nice with the flip out screen. I can look over, make sure that it's working. Chances are though I'm gonna be in focus because it's got the dual pixel autofocus, which mm, just works great. It's got that microphone input jack, so I'm not worried about the wind, and it's also got a built-in limiter that you can turn on so that if your vocals are getting too hot, it's bringing down the volume a little bit. Again, something else that you don't have to think about. The ultra wide angle lens, most of the stuff just fits in the screen. Be warned though that 11 millimeters with a 1.6 crop factor is about 18 millimeters. And then if you turn on the digital IS to smooth it out, if you're doing lots of walking and talking, which I would say I mistakenly did in the beginning, you'll have lots of shots where you think that it might be framed up properly if you're not looking at the screen and it's not quite there. But turn off the digital IS, 18 millimeter equivalent on full frame is enough. And it's really nice because you can fit two people in the frame while holding it on a tripod. Uh, you're seeing so much more of what's going on in the world around you as opposed to the kit lens. What else? HDMI output coming out of this is nice because it comes out clean, meaning, at least for me, clean, means no icons on the screen. So if you wanna go live on YouTube, you wanna do some kind of streaming, you wanna be able to plug this in and use it as a webcam with a card, 
it works for that. And that was one of the biggest drawbacks of some other Canons was they wouldn't let you take the icons off the screen. Really like that. The big thing though, the reason that I switched has actually very little to do with picture quality, although I would say that this camera puts out some really, really, really clean images. I'm rolling a clip here where you can see that it's actually almost like a little bit too sharp because look at like my face and my pores. It's like, yeah. And that, that was at 1080. That wasn't even at 4K, which you can shoot if you set it up properly. The big reason that I switched was simply because of the size of the camera. And if you're not traveling, I don't worry about it. it. It doesn't really matter. But if you are traveling, and sometimes we're going places where I need this camera and I need that camera and I need a couple of big lenses for that camera, because this one, if this one did proper 120 frames per second, like mostly full width, where I could turn on the digital IS and I could get the good autofocus at 1080p, I probably would sell the Sony, but there is nothing better in my mind than 120 frames per second on the Sony, where you get the audio, you get image stabilized, you get everything with the good autofocus, Ugh, just creates beautiful B-roll. But because of that, I'm breaking both cameras, and the SL2 is bigger, the lenses for the SL2 are bigger, and this is so nice and compact. I love being able to put this lens in my pocket and have it there as a B-roll lens to be able to pull out and do it. Now, it is a little bit more money, I, I can't speak 100% for how it is in the States, but I think it's gonna be about $500 more-ish to get this camera an ultra wide and a fast kind of B-roll lens over what it would be with the Canon SL2. So it's definitely a, a jump in money, but you are getting a few things in, in technically 4K. The 4K time lapses is nice. You're getting that digital IS image stabilization. You can get that if you up to the T7i, if you were looking at that versus the SL2, but Picture quality wise, like I said before, it looks good. Low light, it's fine. It's not as good as my A6500, but it's fine. I'll roll a little clip here of, we were in New York, New York in uh, Las Vegas before NAB. And this is probably at ISO 2500. And then some of the vlogging clips are closer to like ISO 6400. And it's not perfect, but you can still tell a story in that moment. And I think that that is great. I love that right on the touchscreen, you have the ability to switch between manual shooting mode and basically an automatic mode. It's super quick to get to. The thing that I'm actually disappointed in is that this doesn't appear to have any kind of aperture priority mode when you're vlogging. And typically that's what I vlog in is I wanna set the aperture, how much it's blowing out the background, and I want it to adjust the shutter speed and the ISO to whatever it needs to be to just make that work. And in this one, you basically have automatic, which could mean that you're trying to like, you know, separate your face from the background a little bit more, and it just has decided to crank up the f-stop, and that's not gonna happen. But at the end of the day for vlogging, if you want it to be cinematic, then you flip it over to manual and you do the manual controls. You can still leave it in an auto ISO, but if it's bright out, you're gonna be cranking up that shutter speed. But other than that, it's a vlogging camera that just works, that blends all the features pretty much that I think matter, which is a selfie screen, great autofocus, a microphone input jack, some kind of stabilization for lenses that don't have it. I wish it was proper in-body instead of digital, but that's a compromise that I can live with. And it has 4K. But the thing about 4K is you're not gonna vlog with 4K. What you can do with 4K though, is if you're doing these style of videos, I can take this camera, put it there, lock off the focus, it, you know, push the tripod back so it's at the right distance, and then there you go. You're getting some really nice 4K footage. I just wouldn't use it for everyday things unless you actually need to zoom more. Then the 4K can be nice because you've still got the digital IS that you can do. And for grabbing B-roll, it can be handy. So, there you go. Canon M50, it's a winner in my books because it just seems to do everything really well, and you don't have to think about it. And for vlogging, that is so critical because then you and me can just focus on the story. I'm Justin, if you've got any comments, leave them below. I'd, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell for the notifications, throw me a thumbs up. Um, I'm gonna go and let it reference some of the other videos that I've shot with this, and there'll be more in the descriptions below. Okay, cool, thanks for hanging out. <laughs>